Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mrs. Overlander and this is Mr. We just call him Mr. It's better when I don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> better to be seen and not heard. Anyways, today we're going to be going over our Overland build video. This is something that you guys have been asking for a, quite some time and I think now it's time to do that. We have a several day trip planned where we're going to be going over everything we did for the build and why. And we're going to do that all different locations. So we live here in Arizona. It's just super flat desert, nothing interesting about where we live. So we actually have the Gladiator completely packed up to uh, pull this off. Also, you guys, this video is sponsored by Oxbeam. For those of you guys who don't know who Oxbeam is, they make lights. And more importantly, they make a light controller for the Gladiator. And it's pretty rad. It works really well. And um, we're going to be giving one away. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and follow this video to uh, make sure you don't miss out on that. That being said, if you guys want to see any of the behind the scenes footage from this trip or any of the behind the scenes from any other videos we've done, be sure to head over to Patreon. All right, you guys. So first mod we're going to go over right now before we hop in the Gladiator is very simple mod. A little key fob. So this is a factory key fob, as you guys know. And uh, this is a key fob that we decided to go with. So the key fob, as you guys know, is very notorious about opening up inside your pocket. <laughs> so it has a ginormous button on the key fob, and it's super annoying. So that's our first mod, and uh, other than that, we're gonna we gotta get on the road. We're actually heading towards Death Valley right now, and it's 10:30. We have an eight-hour drive. Yeah, we have an eight-hour drive. This will give you a long trek. We're actually heading to Hot Springs, and we will check in with you guys if it's daytime at the Hot Springs, if not in the morning. So we'll see you guys on next stop. And we have just enough light to spare to show you guys it's really pretty hot springs uh, I did just try filming this with the GoPro and you could barely see anything so just goes to show how awesome our Canon is I know. actually see it looks like Canon. daytime I actually kind of surprised how bright it is yeah so they have two springs here they have the upper and the lower we're over here at the upper so as a way of kind of having our own time without invading people's space with the scary camera. Well, and the, uh, and the lower springs is super busy. So but look how pretty it is, you guys. Check it out. What do you think? Oh, it's it's like 102 degrees. Is this it perfect? Is hot tub. This is nice. We're gonna be able to get some good behind the scenes content. Some with swimsuits, probably some without. This is a clothing optional hot spring, by the way. Did I forget to mention that? We already made friends over there. And they followed us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go get our camp set up. Yeah. All right, you guys, so we are setting up camp here. It's getting pretty dark out here in Death Valley. And I just wanted to point out, I saw a camp light online and I ended up purchasing it. Check it out. It's behind me. Look at all the light that thing gives off. I mean, here I am. This is, it's really dark out. But I'm over here in the dark and you can see how much light that thing puts out. Crystal's sitting up inside the tent. <laughs> and then we have our huge camp light for our campground. Normally we arrive late at camp and always have to set up at uh, nighttime and stuff. It's, and that definitely makes it a whole lot easier. Makes it we can see. get the footage because if you guys noticed that clip was only 15 seconds that means he had less than a second to grab the camera turn, turn it on, on hit record, hit record on 
and keep it in focus the whole time. It didn't just zoom out of the picture because it probably would have done that if yeah, I had been filming. That was Canon. Canon. So thank you, Canon, once again. Can't you guys tell that we love this camera? The only downside is we are still working on the image stabilization, so I do apologize. The image stabilization was turned off for everything we filmed yesterday, so it was a little bit shaky. Hopefully today it's a little bit better. But we are back in the car heading to our lunch spot and eventually camping. And I wanted to take a minute and talk to you guys about some of the mods that we've done inside our JT, specifically the Hothead Headliners and the Best Top Sunrider. So the Best Top Sunrider is something that we had on Wild Heart, our first build, but it took us almost a year after having Wild Heart to even think about adding it on. And part of that is because, let's be honest, the Best Top Sunrider is kind of expensive. And when you start looking at some of the more expensive mods, you have to put a lot of thought into whether or not it's going to be a good addition for your family and a good addition for your build. Well, it took us over a year, and let me just say that this Best Top Sunrider ended up being, was it the third? I don't know, one of the one of the top five mods for us, for sure. If you guys are trying to figure out what you wanna do for your build, I would highly recommend getting the Sunrider as one of your first things, because you don't have to worry about lugging the freedom panels around. We do a lot of long distance driving and having the doors or the top off at all isn't a very practical thing for long distance trips because the weather changes, it rains, it gets windy. You don't necessarily want that the whole time. We had a fun experience of learning that, doing the Rubicon a while back when it was nice and pretty and then we got to the end of the trail and it ended up being cold and there was snow on the ground and we were not prepared for that and we froze the whole way home. So long story short, if you have a best top sunrider you can just pop it closed. And what's nice is when you're in the driver's seat you can actually open it without having to get up off the chair. So we have the sunrider and we have the hothead headliners. The hothead headliners also help with the sound and it's a mod that I'm really glad that we did for a number of reasons, the sound and also helping with the temperature. If you guys are planning on getting a Sunrider and the Hothead Headliners, make sure to call them and just order the rear set. They will send you just the rear set instead of the whole set so you can save a little bit of money and not get the front pieces if you don't plan on using the freedom panels. That's about, that's about it, I think. <laughs> it um, and the other thing uh, that I didn't know until I called if you guys are thinking about either of these mods. Again, this is all our experience and things that we have found out along the way, and we're just sharing that with you. But Hot Head Headliners is in the process of making headliners specifically designed for the Best Top Sunrider. So if you guys are thinking about that, just keep that in mind. Eventually they will have the Best Top Sunrider and Hot Head Headliner as an option. But for now, we just have the rear Hot Head Headliners and the Best Top Sunrider. Sunrider the best top Sunrider up here in the front, but it has made a huge difference. We're heading to our lunch spot that I found on Google. I'm pretty excited because it's supposed to be like super scenic and stuff. But once we get there, I was gonna go over the exterior mods with you guys to let you guys know what we, what we moved over from Wild Heart onto Mistress. And then the next video after that video will be overlanding mods and going over our tent setup for you guys that are maybe interested in that. Stay tuned for part two, guys. Doesn't, it's not kidding. There's no gas for like 60 miles. So it is make, definitely, sure you're, make sure you're full tank. It, definitely in the middle of nowhere. Whenever, that's one thing that we're learning more recently. Whenever you see no services or next 200 miles, definitely make sure you have what you need for food or for gas because you don't want to be without either of those in those locations. They Especially give you fair diesel. warning. They give you fair warning with the no services sign.